Hey, it's Ian from Las Vegas, good as the lips again. Today I've got a golden companion on my left with a saggy tiller. Okay, so here it is. Customers complaining. <laughs> like those videos online customer states the uh, tillers sagging oh that's doing everything that it's meant to do but they said they drive it and it goes over bumpy ground and it drops on them well they're not meant for bumpy ground but anyway so what I will do and he also wants a mirror. Hmm. Okay. Uh, wants a mirror replacing. So what I'll do is strip it down. Ooh, take the basket off. Strip the front down. And see what's going on. It may be just a, a saggy cable. And it's jumping up and down. There's, there's like a lever system with a cable running down to the piston. So... Let's see what's going on with it. Let's try, try this. There you go. So what you're going to need to do, if you ever want to replace the piston in these, there's a screw there. And I recommend using a screwdriver, not a power drill, because the plastic that holds these in is not good. And you can easily strip the plastic out with a screwdriver, an electric screwdriver. So. so there's eight screws holding this on, and then your front bracket at the front maybe have to take that off if you're going to replace the whole assembly it's not a nice job not an easy job there's a lot of things to take off if you're replacing the the piston that that drives the tiller forward and backwards Ooh, where's my screws that's just an insert. No kidding. So, as you can probably see inside of there, there's your piston. Yeah, he's broken that. Well, that shouldn't cause it problems. There's a very distinct smell of WD-40 coming from this. So, I don't know what, what, who and what has been in it. But anyway, yeah, you'd unplug this to get all this off, unplug this, unplug this, and then unscrew these bottom two screws here to release that so you can get to the bottom of the rim. Oh. See, the only way the ram would drop like that is if you were holding that I mean So I don't damage anything, I'm going to unplug the top cam 
comes home from Shroud Park. So it's not swinging around getting damaged. I mean, you can't get that any looser, to be honest. I mean, if the ram's sticking. These are a pain in the absolute anus to, to replace. I've done several of these on my own, my own scooters that we've got. Unless you have problems with them, you might as well just replace the ramp. Why Golden chose to use Alums? Because it, it, these just strip. They do this, it's so tight. Usually these just strip the heads of these Allen bolts. They just strip as soon as you put an, an Allen wrench in them, if you don't do it right. And you have to drill them out and it makes the right mess. You end up screwing it all up. But this way I can now get this. This front shroud off. That's the only thing holding it on with those stupid bracket. Right. Okay. So once you've got your rubber boot on done from the tiller. And you have the bottom mechanism there for your ram. So the only thing I can think is this is sticking, so I'm going to replace this and this. Replace the cable and the piston. down yes. this is lost pressure and this is stretched so new cable and gas strut I mean to be honest and save them coming back in the future is just replace the cable and the strut Instead of messing around trying to get it to work, if it was my own, I would 
it, it's just locking up there. It's just not not releasing down. It's kind of sticking, and you might as well release, get the release cable and strut. So I shall uh, pass it on to Jenny if she can give the lady a call. Okay, I'm a dumbass. I forgot to plug my microphone in, so I'm going to have to do a voiceover of this video. So we got the parts in from for the golden. I'm just going to undo the box and uh, get the parts out and see what we've got. We ordered the RAM, the uh, two mirrors, and also the cable to operate, operate the RAM. Nicely packed from Golden. Didn't take too long to get in. There's the mirrors, there's the RAM, and there's the cable. We'll grab those. Put that in front of the toolbox because I'm a goof. Yep, there's the uh, cable that operates the RAM. We've actually changed the end of that. And that bit goes at the top, and the bottom is the other end. There's your RAM. There's the two mirrors. So, moving on to the scooter, put those there. So, at the bottom of this original ram that's in the scooter is a little plunger there, and that is to lock the tiller for when you fold it, it locks it into position so it doesn't swing left and right. And that has to attach at the bottom of this ram here. So we have to take that off the original ram and put it on to the new ram. The bolts for that are usually 13 millimeters with an Allen head the other end. I'm not sure what size the Allen head is. But, uh, The little uh, bolt that holds that plunger in place is held in with a posi drive one side and also I think it's a 7mm nylon nut on the other side. I'm just uh, showing where the, the cable goes, where it's located at the top there. It goes through that handle and then locks into place just there and then locks into place down there and then you would adjust it using that to not thread it back through and that operates that silver lever there which operates the, the the plunger on top of the piston which makes the piston release so you can alter the angle of the tiller Just dropping the lift down a little bit so you can see the whole process and we're not uh, obscuring any views. So the first thing I'm going to do is release, uh, release the tension on the cable. Just loosen off that locking nut and then uh, loosen off the locking nut at the bottom. So we can remove that bottom knot there that I'm holding. That holds the cable in place. I think that's a 10 mil. And just hold one side, loosen it off so you can thread the cable through that uh, locking knot. A bit similar to your bicycles when you change your brake cables, they were very similar design. You would thread it through the, the brake from the brake handle and then adjust it with the uh, two adjusting nuts, top and bottom, to get the right tension on your brakes. So it's just the same process, it's just a, 
a release handle for the for the piston. So once you've re released that, that will release the cable from the piston top, and then you would actually uh, undo. That would free up the cable, so you could undo it and take it out. I mean, the cable will actually pull through the cable housing, but you still have to take those uh, those locking nuts out. So it looks like I'm tightening something here, but I'm not. I'm actually because it's threaded the other way. It's upside down, threaded into that black portion where that handle is. I'm actually loosening it to take it out. To remove it from that top bracket there, so it releases it, and then uh, you can pull the cable then through. I'm going to have to cut the end of that because they bent the end of the cable out of, out of the way. So just snip off your old cable. You're not going to use that again. Just snip off the end so it's straight. Makes it easier to pull through the cable housing. Like so. So now that end is free, I'll be able to uh, pull the cable through the cable housing just to release it from the top through the handle. And then you can unscrew the bottom portion to remove the old cable housing, like so. So to replace your, your new one, just to reverse the process, you'll have to take the uh, little clamp off that thing that uh, locates the cable and locks it in place. Place that in there. Feed the cable through the top of the handle, through the little hole that's located in the handle. You may need a screwdriver just to locate it, just to get it through the hole and then through that portion. And then feed the cable housing a little bit awkward like so you may need a screwdriver just to help it through the bottom portion of that uh, bracket that holds that handle in I'm using a, a wrench just to, to locate it so pull that through then you can put your sheath in over your brake cable sheath I remember which orientation it goes and then just uh, tighten that up. And you can just basically turn the, the outer casing of the brake cable, operating cable, whatever we want to call it, just so it's located and it's not going to fall out. And then bend it into, uh, that's already been placed there, that, that's loose. Then the locking nut alters the, dif the distance from the bracket to the cable. So if it takes up any slack, it has a locking nut on, underneath. Okay, so now I want to move on to uh, take off the ram, which is held in by an Allen bolt, which is covered in paint so you definitely need a brand new allen wrench allen key 
and tap it into place just to securely locate it otherwise you will strip the head of the allen bolt then you're gonna have to break out the grinder to remove that bolt so just be careful make sure you get a good allen wrench the right size tap it into place so you get good seating which you'll see me do in a second Just knock it into place so it's nice and snugly fit so it's not going to slip. I mean, you could use a hammer, but I tend to use whatever's at hand and I just slowly crank it. I'm using a long Allen wrench here, which was a silly idea, it just won't go past that top uh, shroud attachment, so I'm going to have to wiggle it out, get it out of there. So once it's loose, then you can, uh, it's in two sections, this bolt. It's uh, a threaded bolt one side and then an internal threaded bolt on the other side. And they're both Allens, same size Allen. And that secures the top of the piston to the actual tiller itself. You may have to punch it through if it's a bit stiff. It's not threaded this side, so I usually just try and twist it to get it to come out. You can articulate the tiller, because it still will operate. So you can move the tiller to suit you to try and get that out. I'm trying to pry it out with a screwdriver one more side, because it's threaded on the inside, so just be careful, make sure you don't go into the threads, just to knock it through, which I did, I went into the threads, but it didn't damage them, so that's your, your internal threaded on that side. Now once that tops out, you want to remove the bottom portion of the ram now, which like I said, it's a 13mm nylon nut on one side and an allen wrench on the other side I think they're the same size allen wrenches that's in the top as well as the bottom and again make sure your allen wrench is new or in good condition and then just loosen that up This is where it can get tricky. Just drop the handle away from you, just so you can get to the piston without the handle of the tiller hitting you on the head. And then just remove that bolt, that nut. Just careful. There's only the nut and then the washer. There's no internal washers on the inside of the ram. It's just one bolt. And then that comes out with that little plunger which we'll have to remove okay a little nylon locking knot there 7 mil. again with a Posi drive or cross cross head screwdriver just to undo that to remove that locking pin that that's to lock your tiller in place. When it's folded down, just remember the orientation because it has a flat spot just at the top there. So make sure that goes in the right orientation when you put it on the uh, new ramp. So it goes like that, so it's facing the back of the ram. Always best to sort of keep them both in hand. I'm trying to find somewhere to, to balance the circular ram. 
want to take the other one off. Not too difficult of a job, but it's definitely up there in uh, the not easy category. A lot of fiddly little parts to put back together. But if you do it methodically, a bit at a time, it should be uh, quite easy enough to do. So that's the plunger back in. For want of a better name, it doesn't have to be over tight, it has to be loose so it uh, articulates with the piston and the tiller. And then just offer it up and then put your bolt back in, and push it through. Then your silver washer on the other side, and then your locking nut back on. So that's the piston lower piece set into position. It doesn't have to be uh, over tight, just enough so it still articulates, but not to the point that it locks the tiller up. It has to uh, be able to tilt forward and backwards. And then just nip it up. More, more than finger tight, of course, but not too tight that it locks it up. There we go. Just so it still moves, but doesn't flop around. Okay, so this top portion will need to come off. Now I thought just this piece, and then I realised that you need the whole top portion, including the black portion as well. And that's the piece that actually activates the ram. That little plunger on the top there is what operates the ram to release it, so you can adjust the tiller. And that is the reason why it's not activating correctly. The little nipple at the top there, as you can see in the middle of the screen, is uh, is getting stuck in the down position, making the tiller operate by itself, kind of droop forward by itself. Just dirt and debris gets in there and and locks it up. So I'm actually doing this wrong. I'm taking this portion out where I don't need to. because of my goof and then I realized no tighten that back up and I need the whole thing because they don't supply that piece they don't give you a new one and you have to replace yours so if yours breaks then uh, I think the only portion of that that would break would mainly be the uh, the knot so there's a locking nut on top of the uh, piston which you would have to undo to release it, which I have to put in the vise. Okay, I'm going to place the ram in the vise so I can undo that locking knot. Just trying to set the camera up so you can see what I'm doing. You could probably do it with a set of channel locks, as they call them in the US, or uh, adjustable spanners, as they call them in the UK, like you saw earlier. I used it as a hammer, but I locked it in the vise just so I could undo the uh, the locking knot at the top, because it is quite tight on there, just so I can unscrew that and place it on the new piston. There we go. Yep, so you don't need to remove that, but that goes on top of the new piston. Okay. So there's the old piston. So 
escape located on the new one. It doesn't need to go on too far down, obviously just so it touches the that pivoting silver point there. And then you can tighten up your locking nut once it's uh, in the place where you want it. And then you can turn your piston to suit. So as long as there's not too much play in there, but you don't want it just touching because it could activate the uh, the piston, as you can see there. Now we can offer up the tiller to the uh, new piston and then bolt that into place. Now this can be a bit of a pain in the butt. So uh, the way I did it was raise the piston up to its maximum and then you have to try and align the holes in that uh, black bracket, for want of another word, to the top of the piston bracket to bolt those two together. You have to do some finagling and some jiggling just to feed the bolt through and maybe, well I did actually hit it with a hammer. No, that's not a hammer here. Try get it to locate with a screwdriver. Just be careful with the threads in that bolt. I'm just trying to align the two together. Just operating the ram to see if I can line it up. Reoffer up that. I find the best way is if you do get a hammer and just tap it and don't go wailing on it. After a few seconds of unsuccessful attempts trying to locate it, we'll get the multi-tool out and just tap it into place. And then you can thread the other side through. Just make sure you don't cross-thread it. should go in by hand. Again, this shouldn't be over tight. But just tight enough to lock it into place. Don't that portion doesn't uh, pivot as much as the bottom portion so yeah, two of the same size allen wrenches just to lock it into place you could put thread lock on there but yeah crank down on it a little bit more than the bottom because it doesn't articulate as much up there yeah, it's actually locked into place there we go we'll just smash the camera So that's your piston in. That should operate nicely. And the pin's located in the correct place, so that's all back together. So now time to add the cable to the, that uh, piece we've just un installed on top of the ram so thread that through the uh, bottom locating adjustment knot that's actually held in there loose it's not threaded in at all the locking knot will adjust it and then thread it through the silver portion which is the bit that operates the ram put, puts that plunger up and down just be careful like I did there 
you will actually fray the end of the wire just try and snip it off as best you can if you do get a fray because otherwise it so you'll find it difficult to put the locking nut at the end of the uh, cable it's like it was when you did your bicycle brakes guaranteed as soon as you threaded it through the brake caliper it uh, splayed one of the wires and you could never get it threaded right but I find it if you twist it it'll, it'll go on alright so I'll offer it up to the top of the cable where it's still a bit loose at the top but not too too loose that the cables flexing around I, I thread it up to the bottom of that metal leather po portion and then just quickly tighten that up it uh, turned out to be a, a slot at either end so you can use two uh, flat end screwdrivers or the the actual other end that uh, you'll see in a second I think it's a 4.5 millimeter tiny little nut end which I haven't got a crescent wrench or spanner that small so I have to use a, a little tiny socket luckily I've got pretty much every size up to about four mil four millimeters I'm not sure what, what, what that is in uh, in American language but yeah I'll try the uh, that one was too big. There we go. That will do it. Just so you can tighten it up. Tighten it up from the nut side, not the uh, right hand side. That's there just so you can get purchase on it to tighten it. I'll just get a little uh, ratchet there to tighten that up. We don't want that cable slipping. And just pinch it tight so it doesn't move. So that's that done. So that uh, just needs adjusting there. Just pull the cable tight and then move the locking nut so it pinches tight on top of that uh, black bracket that we installed. And it's a 10 millimeter, so just hold the top thread thread it down till it's tight and then just lock it into place and also do that on the top so you don't want just that little bit of movement there you don't want it to too sloppy or too tight just so there's a little bit of movement there so it's you know it's not pressing on the top of the plunger and it's going to accidentally operate the uh, piston Unfortunately, we're slightly out of camera shot here. I'm, ju I'm just going to alter that for you. So you just need to do the same there. Just make sure it's uh, tight. It's just enough movement there. Just to nip that loosen up a touch. And then we can alter. Just loosened it up a little bit, it was just a tad too tight. Want a little bit more play in that. It will go all the way down, it's just that the tiller's at uh, a 45 degree angle and that, that plunger will not go down unless the handlebars are straight. Just bend that out of the way so it's not sticking out. And then we we'll just tighten up this locking nut here. Just make sure that's tight so it doesn't slide around or go, get loose and it's uh, clear your tools off time it's time to put the, the shrouds back on so just pull your rubber boot back up it's held in with the uh, two machine screws self tapping 
machine screws, one at the front, two at the back. That just holds the uh, the rubber to the tiller so it doesn't sag down. That's the front bracket for the basket. That's the rubber insert that goes between the front and back tiller shrouds and underneath the handlebars. Don't forget that. So these are the screws that go and hold the rubber to the tiller and they go in that uh, little bracket there as you can see. Doesn't need to be over tight just so it doesn't to flop down it just locates it in place like I said two at the back of the tiller spin it round and then one at the front No need to use an electric uh, screwdriver on that. You don't want to go cranking down on it and ripping the rubber. It's only there to hold it up. And off for your front shroud. That's easy to locate. Okay, so relocating the front tiller shroud. We uh, offer up the bracket. That's held in with those four Allen screws. I think they were three millimeter. I just can't remember. And then, again, you don't need to over crank on this. There's no point. As long as it doesn't rattle loose. Goes on that way round with the two prongs at the top and the single one at the bottom for your basket. And again, for just four screws. It doesn't need to be over cranked. doing is holding that on and we have a screw missing so I'll have to go and get one out of my stash of different screws that I've got just for this kind of thing I put everything in a bag so I don't know where it went typical you either get parts that are missing or you get too many parts left over so, okay, there we go, find one. Let me just locate that one then. Well, it helps if you plug your microphone in. Oh, damn, I'll have to do a voiceover. But anyway, let's get back to it. Oh, I'm out of breath. Just got a scooter delivery from Golden as well. Uh, it's easy to plug in. Just follow your colours, they'll only go in one. One way. And your main hot wire. There's just a bit of a it? Oh, it's at the back there. Right, feed that over the top. it over the top and fish it through 
over the top of the handlebars is what I'm talking about. And plug it back in. Quick check. Okay, so I forgot the horn. There it is. And finally, horn wire. Put it on. Yep, everything's plugged in. It's nice and quiet. It's not complaining. And then push everything back together. Okay. Kind of locate it as best you can. And what I usually do is start with the bottom screws just to hold it in place. Yeah, just recorded that last segment without any sound, so I'm going to have to do a voiceover for you. Just explaining what what to do. And you don't have to crank down on these again. These are just holding it together. They, they strip out really easy. If you end up doing this two or three times, they, they widen the, where they screw into. And they end up not biting. Not forgetting this, which goes in this left, left hand side of the top of the tiller near the handlebars. And once you've got that in, you can then put your screw in just to nip it down. I'll show you what I'm talking about. That piece there, and then you got a screw just above the, the tiller there, and just nip that down. Ah, dear me. And I'm going to let that up there. Like I say, you don't need to crank on them. I think I'm missing that one. Missing that one. The two screws are missing as well. What the heck? I put everything in the bag. I don't believe it. Unless they were missing in the first place. More than likely. screws that will fit. Test. Light works, both on works, speed dial, throttle. There we go. So that's the random. I thought we ordered two of these mirrors because they said to come in pairs. Let's see what's in the box. Yes, there's two. Places mirror. Okay. Put 
you'll pay us for a change. Jack, if that's who it is. No, I don't know. Wind it in. Probably a 13 mil. Just a <coughs> I usually think so, yes. Just to nip it in a bit in place. That help clamp that down. And the other side's a 14. Because they want to be different. Different memories, I guess. Tying that down for them. There he goes. So let's put Jack in the back. All right. Jack in the back of the crack. There we go, new mirror. New piston. That's nice and locked in place now. Let's get it the hell out of here. Drop his basket back on. Yeah, I'm not a keen fan of those jobs. Like I say, I've done two or three before, once on a maxima, if not two on a maxima. Very similar setup. And a couple of goldens that I've done. Alrighty, that's the uh, golden gone. All finished and done. Customer's happy. It's just taken that away now, so yeah. So if you like these videos, like, share, subscribe, we appreciate it. And uh, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll answer them as best as I can. So, till next time, keep on riding. Bye now.